going to take a look at the Dado user interface for the Dado appliances. So here we go. I'm logging into the local machine on my network with my username and password. And first thing you see is I plug into sort of the overview page. So this basically shows that uh, the, the amount of protected data that I have, the amount that's actually local uh, of the storage, because I have the Sirius device that has one terabyte of storage. And it also has an off-site server, which is in the cloud. So this allows me to take snapshots or restore points and keep it local on the network. So for quick restoration and also put it to the cloud. And then any agents you have running on the background, uh, which is running on my laptop right now, has a has a uh, place down here, and you can see there's a little alert, uh, and the agent is reporting errors. So if I actually click into this agent, it's going to show me the errors. But before we do that, you'll take a look at this, and uh, you can see that I'm actually uh, have 260 gigs backed up of data. So if I click on here, you'll see that I actually go back to the recovery points, or I move to the recovery points. So it tells you what your cloud storage is, uh, the protected size, all this sort of stuff. And what the data was doing is doing incremental updates. So after the first synchronization or the first sort of full backup, uh, it's going to do a copy local, which I can see here, which is going to be all my local. And then it's going to actually move a copy to the cloud. Okay. So I'm going to look at all of them. And what you see here is if I go down, that uh, roughly about the week of January 7th to 14th, that all of a sudden I actually get some ransomware. So it's, it's looking that I have ransomware suspected on my system. So if I wanted to, I could actually go and take a look uh, and see where the file folder might be or take a look at where they're identifying this as potential ransomware. So I know it's not actual ransomware, um, but it's something I installed to give that appearance of ransomware just so we can show it so if we look under protect this is going to give you all your agents and then you'll see the alert here so all your agents would be listed so it's actually saying that this agent has identified having signs of ransomware I can manage my recovery points configure my agent settings remove an agent show backup logs or even start a backup so an ad hoc, ad hoc backup but right now I actually will show you that I have my backup set up to run twice a day so if I hit manage recovery points we go back to the same screen so we've already looked at that so I'm gonna go back to protect and I'm gonna go configure agent settings so here's where you can actually pause all your backups pause your backups to the cloud so that you you can say that I only want it local or I don't want it off-site or if you're running some a lot of backups you may just want to make sure you have a few of them finished before you start doing the cloud backups down here is the local backup and retention policy, so I can set the interval so you can see every day between 10 and 3, I'm actually performing backups. You can set it up uh, to run every hour, every five minutes. Uh, you can set up how long you want to keep it, so we're keeping these backups for three months. Um, cloud backup retention, so it's going to back up once a day, so seven days, and of course I can change that to never or back up every hour. It all depends on the device that you're backing up and how much incremental data is being changed and then some additional configuration information down here. Okay, so I've also set up email notifications so that if I do get an error or I get some sort of uh, ransomware, it will notify me. Okay, so that's in the, the administration. So now if I want to remove the agent, I want to look at the backup logs, I can do that. Now there's a file share capability on this device, which means I could actually set up um, a file sync and, and share, a data drive, or I can actually set this up as a NAS. So what I can do is take some of the bandwidth, or sorry, bandwidth, some of the space on my drive that I'm not using and set up as a local share for all the users on the network. For, uh, synchronize, to synchronize between your, uh, to force synchronization between your cloud and your, uh, your local. To restore, which we'll go to in a second, is if I want to restore it back to uh, another device or uh, I had an issue for my let's say that my laptop crashed this morning and I want to restore it to another PC I would do the restore here then there's the advanced I'll take a look at that in a second so if I go to restore what it's going to do is actually going to show me a couple things number one is uh, which was the active comparison so I won't go into this just yet 
but you'll see that I did a comparison. Remember I looked at uh, previously where there was an issue where I had ransomware? What I could actually do with this under the advanced tab is go up to what's called backup insights. And this will actually go through your backups and compare them. And normally if you have ransomware or some sort of virus, there's gonna be a significant change in the files or there's gonna be new, you know, file size or the file structure or new items added to the, your, your drive that weren't there before. And this will comp it'll compare the two and then show you where the differences are. Now, as a recovery, I can choose which system I want to back up, which is my system. And then I can do a couple things. If I want to just pull a file off it, I can do file restore. If I want to boot this up on the actual data appliance, it has a, a VMware environment that I can, I can boot the system up on there. So I can take that local restore point. Let's say we'll go before ransomware suspected, which is maybe here. And I can virtualize it right on the device. I can virtualize this in the cloud. So again, you can see that it points out that there's ransomware and you don't want to virtualize anything with ransomware. But what I can do is this will, this will restore this recovery point into the data cloud, which you then have access to. So if you need to get in make some configuration changes, pull some data, or even run it, you can do it in the cloud. Virtualizer versus hypervisor, I can actually boot this up into a hypervisor that I have selected. Um, and now I've got a couple here. And this will actually push some files to your hypervisor, which you've already previously connected, and allow you to start or restore this recovery point on your own hypervisor. ESX upload, this allows you to just upload this file to your ESX and then you can use it as a, as a, um, a add it to your inventory or your library and restore it in your VMware. And then you have a couple other things here. Bare metal rest, uh, restore, which is, it creates an ISO, diskless resource, which is a USB, and then you can export the image. So if you wanted to, you can export this as a VMDK, VHD, all the other VMware type of file options. All right, I'm not going to recover this now, but the other thing I want to show you here is I do have ransomware, so I'm going to go into here under configure, advanced, backup insights, and it's going to bring up the comparison here. So I'm going to take a look at this comparison, and it's going to go through those two backups. So it's going to take a look, and then it's going to give you a legend here of Files that have been modified, files that were deleted that no longer exist. This was newly created in the snapshot. You know, it gives you a legend of all the information so that you can go back and take a look at what's going on here. So what you'll see here is it'll identify the places where there's files that no longer exist, uh, files that are new that were created, and then ones that have additional information. So typically I'm looking here to see what my file structure is and the fact that they may be new, but if I had all of a sudden the uh, one of these folders that was you know 16 gigs here, there's files uh, in a folder, and all of a sudden it's 10 gigs here, there might be something else going on. So at this point, it's probably the the application that I installed that I know gets identified as uh, ransomware, and I know through running a data an antivirus scan that it's actually not. Uh, but it does give you a false positive so you can see that. So it's important to show this when you actually have um, something actually identified as ransomware. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this backup insight. Then what we can do here is you can take a look at your reports. Well, apparently I, I cleaned it up instead of just going back. If I go back to my reports, I can take a look at the backup reports and it's going to give me a report on all the reports that happened and what happened and any failures that I had. I can also export them or if I want to go back in here and take a look at continuity audit, it's going to give me an idea of all the retention, all the backups. So if any backups were missed, when they're missed, you know, the retention time, all that sort of stuff. So you have some additional visibility into the actual backups. All right, so that's just a quick uh, overview of the Dato uh, backup, well, Dato continuity device and the device overview.